Hey guys, welcome back to Nurse Bros. Oh my gosh, what episode is this now? I think four now. We're pumping them out. We are. We're mass producing. <laughs> We're we <just>, from China. <laughs> we just wanted to continue to thank everybody for the early support. I heard a lot of feedback this week. I think one of the most interesting things I heard was from a coworker. Oh my gosh, what he, happened? He was actually listening to our podcast on lunch break, which was crazy to hear came back to the floor hey i was listening to your podcast and he proceeded to tell me he, he really enjoyed listening to us and it was very interesting for him to hear our perspective on things and he said i agree with a lot of stuff you guys are saying and then there's some 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 stuff i disagree with which honestly which yeah that that's the point of this and i'm glad that people will tell me i disagree which is normal and healthy and that doesn't really happen a lot anymore oh yeah of course it's all discussion healthy discussion that we like and it was and great for me to hear like someone that doesn't agree with us will still listen to us mm -hmm. even even though someone you respect too exactly so it was, it, that was a nice thing to hear and then night shift saying they listen yeah, to us. shout out to night shift i know my god we're, we're really expanding this it's, thing it's so strange when people told me they listen and i'm like really <laughs> it's still weird going on Spotify. <laughs> you yeah. see the Nurse Bros logo. So, doing doing something a little differently this time. I'm right next to you. We'll mention why we're doing that a little bit later on. True. This is our first episode actually recording in the in the Beats Lab. So, how do you feel about schools opening back up? It's a minefield waiting to happen. I have thought about it, and I really don't know how to feel besides I'm glad I don't have a child yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's a win-win situation by any means, and this is truly a position where both sides have merit, and it's, it's a tricky balancing act. It is. It, it's difficult because I know how important school is to kids, parents, the whole family role. And obviously, it's harder on teachers to have to do things virtually. This whole situation, I feel like there are no winners. No, not in the slightest. I mean, to the parents' credit, you know, a lot of times child care is very expensive and they need a way to go to work. And school oftentimes gives them that, that opportunity to do so. And the fact that some kids just need school it's the only time they can eat yeah that's to the kids side i mean there's a lot of value to be gained by going to school socialization you know food education i mean access to education because that's not also guaranteed at home for everyone it's difficult to take a teacher which is one of the most underpaid professions that we're asking them to risk their safety in order to take care of our kids and from what i've seen locally Anyway, and really nationally, I have not seen a comprehensive set of safety measures in place. And I feel that mostly in this country, just our leaders have not really been on the ball with this. And it, it is jeopardizing kids and family and teachers. Yeah, and that's something I don't really know how you do effectively. Because as we discussed with masks and many other topics, I mean, you're relying on an individual not just one individual, but many different individuals to all hold themselves to the same standard. You know, and that's that's a tricky situation. We have an article here about this Georgia high school teenager who posted this photo of a crowded hallway, no masks, things like that. That alone, that situation is terrible. I mean, there's no social distancing there. It's a disaster waiting to happen. And then you couple that with you know, that student then getting suspended for posting that photo, which that's ridiculous. Because that was insane, honestly. I, I was so shocked when I saw that. Yeah, we have to hold these people to the same standard, and we have to call out these situations where that standard is not being ma maintained. But the thing with rapidly spreading virus is if you have missteps, you've already spread. It's a very fine line to walk. So guys, today's episode is going to be a little different. We can sit here and talk about this all day, the uh, back to school topic, but what better than to ask an expert's opinion? 
So today we have Ariel, who is a middle school teacher in Jacksonville, to talk about the whole coronavirus and school situation. So Ariel, hello. Our first Hi. guest. Welcome. Expert was uh, incredibly generous. Thank you. Well, you're more of an expert than we are, that's for sure. I don't know about this year. It's a little different. Yeah. There's We're a all lot learning. of uh, different factors this year. Did you do virtual over the summer? I did, and well, I guess we started in March, so we left for spring break and never went back, and then we were all virtual, and then I did summer school uh, virtually, yes. How's that adjustment been? Have you done anything virtually before? Only as a student while I was getting my degree, and that was really different just because an online class that way, the professor will post something and then you do it. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit more accountability that is needed when you have 12 year olds doing it or, yeah. you know, you can't just give them something and expect them not to ask a million questions, even if it's laid out, which will, would be the hardest thing I'd say about virtual school is not being able to answer questions as needed. From what I and, hear, too, I, I imagine the kids are trying to learn what you're teaching them. But in between that, they have to also learn it seems like all this software and new way of learning too which they've never done before yeah absolutely i think that this new generation that i'm teaching definitely has an advantage that way just because they've always been around computers yeah they grew up with it so yeah definitely easier transition i i do see some of my colleagues who are a little bit older struggling quite a bit so there's just a learning curve there it was a difficult spring and i thought summer was a lot easier for a lot of reasons for summer they were supposed to show up to my class for a certain amount of time and so i could look at them and then you know i took attendance that way while during the spring during the regular school year they just kind of came in as they pleased and there was Mm. no real way to take attendance there was no way to assess them. When, when do you start fall? Have you guys started yet? So teachers are back in the building today. And then the students come back on Thursday next week. So the 20th. Oh, wow. Were, were you guys given a choice of virtual or in-person or anything like that? You were only given that option if you teach kindergarten through fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And if you've been working for three years or more. Oh, okay. Wow. So they did put restrictions on it. Yeah. So I didn't qualify. So I didn't have that option. We are doing a hybrid model which should be very interesting. So because I teach in a middle school and we have three different grade levels in the building, each grade level has different days that they come in and different days that they'll be online. Oh, wow. So on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, the sixth grade will be in the building. And then on Wednesday, they'll be online watching me from the computer. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, seventh grade. And on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, eighth grade. And that will be the schedule that stands until September 14th. And then reevaluation from there? Yes. You think the building can accommodate that? I mean, enough distance with how they're suggesting they lay it out? No. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this in the intro before you called in. I feel like there are no winners in this scenario. I mean, we're definitely not going to be able to follow CDC guidelines. I feel the students, teachers, parents, there's no win-win situation in this whole thing. No, not at all. The win-win is that there's no COVID-19, right? Exactly. We were talking a little bit ago, and we did find an article, too. Martin County went back to school yesterday, and already there was a class today that a student had symptoms, and now the whole class has to stay at home and quarantine for the next 14 days. So in my mind, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, I get the need to go back. I understand the importance, but if we're just going to have to keep quarantining, when do we say, well... Should we just go back to online or do we keep trying this? I really don't know because I know that there are a couple schools north of here that have reopened and had cases and they're still going. So I don't Mm -hmm. really know when we reach the threshold. Like, is it 50 kids that get infected? Is it? I have no idea. (laughs) How many lives do you gamble on? I mean, unfortunately. Yeah. You were talking about the CDC and not being able to accommodate in the building. And today was my first time seeing my classroom in quite a while. I had a classroom of 35 last year. That was my average. Wow, that's that's a lot. (laughs) I was told that there, yeah, it was a big class. I was told that there would be significantly less students in the classrooms 
so that you could have social distancing. I go in and I was told that there would be 27 Mm. desks and there are 27 desks with shields. So the Mm. shield is on the right side and in front of them. And it's a piece of like pexiglass with black cardboard. And then... I feel like they'd be more like prisoners in that (laughs) that stance than being in school. I couldn't imagine. And then the principal said today, go ahead and sit in the child's desk and look at the whiteboard so that you know what you can write and like where you can write. You can't. And then they threw in an extra seven chairs without... (laughs) shields and they don't have shields for them so now i have 35 seats in there but i don't have enough shields or room for social distancing do you have to decide who gets the shield or are those just (laughs) yeah no first come first serve (laughs) (laughs) oh boy Uh, unfortunately it seems like this whole i mean just leadership around the board i mean nationally and statewide and i know a lot of the school districts are making the decisions but it seems like they don't really have an idea and i feel like school really creeped up on everybody so fast we were all dealing with obviously pandemic and life itself over summer and i i think a lot of people weren't ready for august and the beginning of school to start so i feel the last two weeks you know you watch the news and stuff was when all of the decisions were even just starting to be talked about yeah it all happened pretty recently and even now and during all our meetings today the words i don't know were spoken so many times Mm -hmm. and and they actually talked about how you have to allow for the i don't know right now you have to give each other forgiveness for that because there's not anybody that really knows what's going on even just last week the superintendent had said something and then yesterday it was changed it was reversed so it's a moving beast for sure tyler stated it feels like it creeped up so fast but I disagree with that I feel like we've I mean we wanted to bury our head in the sands and pretend we weren't going to be dealing with this in the fall that the summer heat was going to be killing it but <laughs> yeah and, that's actually a good point you're right and but the reality is we actually looked at how this was panning out we would be in this situation in fall we had plenty of time to prepare and leadership had time to prepare and now here we are scrambling and now the people who are supposed to know say I don't know and then the rest of everybody under them kind of is scrambling yeah, we're, we're all just kind of going with it the best we can. We're trying to make it as normal as we can because that's, that's the only information that we have other than this hybrid schedule and some distancing and recommendations. But other than that, my curriculum won't change. So that's, you know, my lesson plans will be the same. Someone brought up today that like, you know, you don't have everybody in the building, but if you teach all the grades, does eighth grade miss this lesson because I've already taught it? to the sixth graders i don't think there's going to be many winners as we come out of this i mean it's just do the best we can in this type of situation Mm -hmm, exactly and and i'm hoping that there's a real evaluation in september for something a little different Mm -hmm. can you tell us one side of why it's important for the kids to go back to school and then maybe the other side of why we shouldn't be doing school just so i can pick your brain on that a little bit Yeah, so I've been seeing a little bit about how teachers are being selfish by not wanting to go back. And I genuinely think that the most selfish thing I feel right now is wanting to go back because I do miss going to work and I do miss my job because I love it the way I do. I miss the kids and I miss those relationships. And so like that's actually super selfish because we don't know how dangerous going back is really going to be for everybody. And I'm in a very big building. There's a thousand middle schoolers and wow. 60 teachers. And the, the odds that many people will get infected are higher, mm-hmm. especially because the students had an option of going completely online and only less than 200 of them have opted for that. Wow. Just so, so you know, because you can't see us right now, we, we, when you said you had a thousand kids in the building, we both looked at each other dumbfounded. It is a it is a big middle school. So like some high schools can get that big, really. But like it's a big middle school. And when you think about that many kids having to wear masks and having to stay away from each other and having to be like, I, I can't handle them staying away from each other when the, this isn't going on. Right. That's what would keep me out of the building is, is really their safety. And we did a little survey today about like what's most important to you. And I was like, well, there's, you know, hours in their safety and then the mental health aspect and then their grades. Not, not going back is just is just their safety. And the other cons, I've so I told you that there's only 200 or less than 200 of my thousand that have opted for completely online. And that's at my school. And there's varying reasons for that. And I think that one of them is that my school is in a very low income area, a very mm. low social economic area. And then there's schools that aren't too far away, but are in a better funded area. And they only have 100 kids in the building out of 600 that would normally be there. 
So it's really, I want to say it's not that fair. This whole situation is not fair, I think, especially when you break it down by district. It seems like some may have an easier go at it than others. Yeah, so my students, a lot of them just have to be there. Like during the summer, I had a kid who did entire summer school with an infant in his lap because he Mm. was the caretaker. And I mean, he's 12. So that would be the pro of coming in, I suppose. Uh, And I think that many of the kids are coming in because they can't stay home. And the con is that if they do stay home, there's no one there to take care of them because their parents have to work. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that was like the main thing that you said to me that kind of made me start thinking wow this is that's insane that a 12 year old has that kind of responsibility and it's no fault of his own and really it's not even the parents fault unfortunately that all comes down to a bigger issue of just such poor social safety net in this Mm -hmm. country to where we have to put a 12 year old who should have no other responsibilities besides learning and whatnot, having mm-hmm. to take care of an infant while his parents are working so they can eat. I wanted to ask you, Ari, you seem to have an understanding, respect, you're knowledgeable about, about COVID, you, you know it's a risk. You, I'm <laughs> sure you work with many other teachers who may not have the same level of, not fear, but respect about COVID and understanding that it's a danger. So mm-hmm. how do you feel about those classrooms that are managed by a teacher who might not really care about the guidelines? As we were saying earlier on our introduction, you have one lapse in safety you can spread to a school so what the the expectation for the teachers is that we are the same across the board right Mm -hmm. or we try to be for behavioral and safety issues and the teachers that don't take that seriously have chaotic classrooms Mm -hmm. and so the teachers that don't take one thing seriously just like you said i mean it'll the whole thing will topple down it's because they don't have great classroom management they never took the time to to set expectations for students. I don't have respect for teachers like that in general just because they don't seem to be good teachers in my mind, even without the COVID. Right, right. I will say that during the survey this morning that we took, they asked us on a scale from one to 10, how you feel about certain things. And I'd say 92% said they were very uncomfortable being back in the building Hmm. and that they were ready to take these precautions very seriously and the other ones were somewhat uncomfortable you know it was very we all seem to be kind of on, on the, the same, same page. page that's good do you agree that there are scenarios where i mean i've seen it on the news that the parents are they just don't want to deal with their kids all day like you'll have a stay-at-home mom and her argument is he needs to be in school this is horrible blah 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 but <laughs> those are also the same parents that just stick an ipad in front of their kids and really don't want anything to do with them I think that that depends on the household. I know that there are some parents that are just exhausted because they work all the time. I know that there are some parents that really try very hard and are still not succeeding that way. I know there's a lot of parents that were trying this homeschooling and taking it very seriously and we're still, they just, uh, sometimes it's hard to teach your own kid. I don't know if you, whoever taught you guys to ride a bike or anything and if it was like smooth sailing, but for me, like my parents could not teach me to ride a bike. My parents couldn't teach me to drive a car because we just didn't, they didn't know my learning style and I didn't love the way they taught. So it was like a personality almost. And I love them both very much. They've taught me other things, but sometimes that's an issue as well. So I I don't know. I think that depends on the house. Just some parents are lazy and some parents don't really want to be around their kids. And some parents, I just think are struggling with that. I also think that there's a lot of parents that don't know how to teach what we're teaching or what their kids are learning right now it's very insane and like i said it's just a very interesting time right now and we both really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and just let us know how you're feeling how you're doing how everybody else is taking this because it again there's no winners in this situation i don't really think so either i will say i'm excited to be back and Mm -hmm. i am very anxious to be back and they're they're different than they've ever been you know you remember your first day of school kind of jitters right like everybody gets those oh yeah yeah nothing like it (laughs) yeah but and there's there's something a little bit daunting about these jitters like it's not the same (laughs) ominous in a way yeah (laughs) to your point earlier when you said you know the selfish aspect of it too how you were mentioning some teachers are selfish i equate teachers with police a lot because you guys are not paid the way you should be just like police are not paid the way they should be and then we criticize them when we're asking them to play 12 different roles 
teaching is no different. I don't think anyone's been selfish, whether you want to go back to school because you miss it or you don't want to go back to school because you feel worried for your safety and other safety. So I don't think any teacher should be worried about feeling selfish. I, I think it's you love what you do. You do it for a reason. Yeah. Well, yeah, I definitely chose this. I think that that a lot of issues in communities would be resolved if money was better allocated. So like I'm not a social worker and I don't have that specific skill set. Not that I don't share certain skills like that, but I don't have that expertise and there needs to be more of those on the street and you know in schools or close to schools. The safety thing is huge. There are a lot of roles and I know that every job takes on a lot of roles. It's not, you know, you're not just a one page thing in any career, but I, I do think that there, there needs to be more careers that are what they're asking of schools needs to be given to other people so that the students in the school can focus on just learning. So essentially more specialized roles that yes. kind of are there and available to help support the more the guidance teaching. counselors more. Right. Yeah, right. It's a big school and there's only one security guard. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and that's definitely not enough. But then that, that means that that role gets placed on us a bit, right? Yeah. Yes. And that's not fair to you or the kids having one security guard for however many thousands of students. It's not safe. I'm also not trained for it. So like last mm-hmm. year, there was, a, <laughs> there was a kid that tried to jump the fence, wanted to skip school. And someone said, go get him. And I said, <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go stop a child. <laughs> Don't you know what they do to teachers that stop children physically? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, that's that's crazy. We really appreciate you taking the time, like I said, out of your day. And before we go, just so you know, Josh and I, we talked about it. We know, again, teachers are always strapped because they're paying for everything in their classroom. And we're not making any money doing this podcast, but we talked about it and... We just want to send you 50 bucks on behalf of this podcast just to kind of get some supplies for your kids and just get what you need for them just to help you out for the beginning of the school year. Make sure you stay safe. I uh, I don't even know if I can accept that. That's incredibly generous, you guys. No, you, no it, you, it's, it's, for the, it's for the kids. Don't worry about it. Is there something that you would like in the classroom? Like, do you think that I can have it? I can buy it on behalf of you guys? Like hand sanitizer, is that important to you? Or technology things? I mean anything like that. Sanitizer's fine, you know. Anything that you need. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say something and and you don't need it because again, you you know your classroom better than us. So just yeah, exactly. Just take care of the kids and take care of yourself and make sure going forward you're staying safe too. Well, I I feel pretty honored right now. This is really that's really generous. I don't even thank you. That's really incredible. You deserve it. It's a dangerous time out there, and you're you're doing an awesome job and. You know, you got a good plan. We want you to be safe. I'll take care of it, I promise. It'll go to good use. (laughs) And we definitely, honestly, would love to have you back again. You were great. And actually, you're our first guest ever on this podcast, so... Oh, many honors. (laughs) Wow, wow, wow. (laughs) That's that's a feat in itself. Gentlemen, please. (laughs) Well, this has been really fun. Thank you so much for having me and thinking of me in this way at all. I really, I feel very, very special. Thank you. Man, no problem. You're a good public servant, and we need more like you. So keep it up and have a great school year this year. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Wow, so that was great. Ariel was, she was awesome. Yeah, that was definitely some good insight. That's crazy. 1,000 kids. In one building? And trying to stagger that. I mean, I don't really, I don't see how you do that effectively. And they said she had, what, 30, 34 kids normally, or on average, or 35. Yeah, and they said, well, you're going to have a lot less, and then 27. And all the devs didn't even have shields. I feel right now, I guess most people are doing the hybrid model. It seems okay, I guess, to have some kids come one day. But if you're going to do that, then I feel why not just keep them at home anyway for the time being. And again, this isn't the kids or the parents' fault. This really boils down to lack of leadership from really from the federal government down to the local school board the fact that this was swept under the rug for so long Mm -hmm. like you alluded to was a serious failure for the children really it's similar to our (laughs) our country's response i mean we knew months prior that we were going to be dealing with this like it was inevitable no plan in action and it's the same thing with school It'll be interesting. I mean, I don't like to say that when people's lives are on the lines, and I don't mean it in that manner, but... It will be interesting, though, especially when flu season gets here. 
Yeah. And then you're trying to decipher between two different diseases and who goes where. It's not going to be fun. It'll be interesting, but it's not going to be fun or good for anybody. Mm-mm. We have some articles here that we want to go over. One here is on this school in, I believe, Georgia, where there's a massive quarantine not too long after opening. What it looks like it was... 1,200 people. It looks like 1,200 students had to be quarantined already. Well... When you're going to quarantine that many people, again, is it <laughs> does it make sense to even go through with this? It seems counterproductive to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Ariel said, I mean, the way she was describing her classrooms, it's ironclad in a way. But also, you have to have everyone on the same page. You can't have any slip up. One slip up. And you wind up in a situation like this Georgia school. We're going to have many more news articles like this. We were talking Martin County. Yes, Martin County, I know it. One day in and they already have to have a whole class quarantine. But then if we think about it, really, they should be in negative pressure rooms, which none of these classrooms are. So if if these people do have corona, well, it's going through the AC vent. Is it going to possibly spread through the school? Are more Mm -hmm. people going to get it? Janitor comes in, cleans the room. Does he touch it, breathe it, go to the next room? It's all questions that really should have been answered probably five months ago. I feel like there's many parallels to teachers and nurses in this regard. You know, a lot of organizations and hospitals are just kind of flying by the seat of their their pants and improvising new policies as we go. And as Ariel was telling us, her supervisors are telling her in regards to certain questions, I don't know. So they're just improvising. It's interesting the people who are on top make the most and they hit you with the I don't know, Mm -hmm. which they're paid and they're leading to know even if they really don't know they need to figure something out Mm -hmm. you know she also said a lot of her colleagues and even her herself are uncomfortable with the situation going back interestingly enough we have another article here about this new jersey school that completely ditches in-person learning after over 400 teachers opt out it's their safety too it's Mm -hmm. the kids yes and a lot of these teachers may have other disabilities or be high risk and from what i have read i did see there was a study i know there aren't many studies they did a study that say children carry the particles of covid19 in their nose 10 to 100 times more than adults do and i found that fascinating because we can all remember well I remember as a kid, I don't have kids, but y'all know when a child has an illness or a cold or a flu, it spreads like wildfire. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're going to be sick or or it will be fatal for them, which is not necessarily the case either. We've seen child deaths. But my point is, they are little vectors, it seems like. The smallest thing, they will spread to the next 20 people. Well, what happens when all the teachers start dropping like flies in this country and then we're back to, there's no one to teach these kids. So it's all the what ifs. We're at that point now where it's just a lot of what ifs. Mm -hmm. Which is not what you want in a pandemic. Ariel was saying she misses being in school. And I can understand that. Like I miss going out to restaurants. I miss doing things. But I'm also cognizant that it's just not safe right now. With these people that are just outright protesting e-learning, I think they're kind of missing the mark here. I mean, obviously it's not ideal for everyone. In fun fact, my middle school was all online really i I went to online middle school it was interesting i was homeschooled two different years i believe it was seventh grade some of sixth and seventh grade and 11th grade and i I did florida virtual school i did fine i didn't mind it i was very Mm self-motivated i got eight hours worth of work done in three and then that was it i did well took ap classes had no issues. I get everybody's different, though, so it's, it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all. <laughs> to contrast you, I did horribly. I was not interested, not motivated. I found it very boring. I mean, the work was fine. It was adequate. The schooling was great. I got through it, but I was not motivated to do it. I was not interested in school in the slightest. I think the material just didn't really fit me. So I can understand e-learning is not for everyone. Nowadays, it's different. I'm older but there's many kids that are very similar to me. There's kids that thrive in the e-learning environment like you did. It's not one size fits all, unfortunately. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Big thanks to our first guest. Ariel was great. I want to have her back just to talk about basic teaching issues in the country. She was fantastic. 
couldn't have made our first guest any better. We yeah. couldn't have scripted that any better. She was amazing. So hopefully we'll get her back on soon. You know, Tyler, when she said she saw that student jump in the fence, I could see you doing that. I could see you as a, as a bad boy. <laughs> I actually was. I was horrible. Elementary school, I was horrible. I, I kind of feel bad. Some of my teachers deserved it and some oh I feel gosh. bad for. What'd you, what'd you do to them? No, I'm just saying, like, my behavior. Some were just awful, but I had some really good ones as well. I was a bad boy in elementary school. My last year, I I skipped class occasionally. It was, it was not good. Well, guys, leave us comments on our Facebook page. We were talking about it, and we would really enjoy just comments of topics to talk about. People who may be interested in coming on, just let us know. Leave it on our Facebook page. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash the nurse bros on every podcast outlet. We're also on there and YouTube under the nurse bros. Yes. So we're going to try to work on a more prevalent social media presence. We know we've been kind of quiet on there, but just to try to make it a little more interactive for you guys and feel a little more involved. I want listener questions. So if you want to comment, if you see us in person and want to let us know, whatever the case may be, hit us with questions, whatever you like. Yeah, just let us know. We'll read them on air. That would be actually really fun. Just throw a segment like that in here. That, that would be great. This is still new, and we're just as new as this podcast, so we're trying to think of more ways to get people involved and to continue to make this fun and make this thing grow. So People ask me how we met. I get that question a lot. That's a story for another time. A little teaser. I, I don't, I'm not going to like how this is going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy that episode. <laughs> What? It was a, it's a good story. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for another time. But we really enjoyed speaking with Ariel, and hopefully we'll get some more people on here soon. For now, we're signing off. Until we see you next time. Bye.